Matrix Plus titration trays, sizing and fitting. This Matrix Plus video will review the features of the titration trays, how to select the proper tray size for your patient, and how to modify the length and shape of the trays to optimize fit, retention, and comfort. Each Matrix Plus tray kit includes the following. An upper and lower titration tray packed with a set of tray attachment pins used to connect the trays to the mandibular positioner, or MP. A patient information card used to record the patient's scale readings and a storage bag used to store the trays and MP for the study. Now let's review how to size and fit the titration trays. Titration trays are available in medium and large sizes and each set of trays consists of an upper and lower tray. On each tray, a label located near the trim lines indicates both size and orientation. For example, MU indicates a medium upper tray, whereas LL indicates a large lower tray. In addition, there is a label located on the mounting bracket which indicates orientation only. Trim lines located on the molar ends of each tray can be used to guide trimming if needed. Incisal grooves located in the front of both the upper and lower tray help position the patient's teeth into the center of each tray when taking impressions. The tray scale, graduated in millimeters, ranges from minus five to plus 13. Prior to a Matrix Plus Theronostic study, three scale readings will be recorded to identify the patient's mandibular range of motion. The zero reading on the scale is the incisal edge-to-edge -edge position. This enables transfer of the Matrix Plus target protrusion position to a bite registration device in preparation for appliance fabrication. Before fitting the patient's trays, Rinse the trays under cold water. Inspect the trays after rinsing and discard any tray that appears damaged or is not visibly clean. Prior to taking impressions, the patient's tray size must be determined and adjustments made in both tray length and width if needed. Always check the fit of the upper tray first. This is a large sized upper tray and as you can see, this tray is too loose. Also, the molar ends of the tray should not extend beyond the mesial half of the most posterior teeth. This tray is too long and is pushing against the tissue in the back of the patient's mouth. Now let's check the fit of the medium-sized upper tray. This medium tray is a better fit. The tray fits comfortably over the teeth. It is not too tight or too loose. There is no tissue impingement and the molar ends of the tray only cover the mesial half of the most posterior teeth. Now we can check the fit of the medium-sized lower tray. This tray also fits well. In cases where the tray is too wide or too narrow to fit the patient's dental arch, the width of each tray can be easily adjusted. A heat torch can be used to soften the tray material around the retention grooves. This will allow for easy bending and adjustment. Tray trimming should be done with a sharp pair of scissors. We recommend using crown and bridge scissors. Trim the trays using the trim lines as a guide while maintaining the tray's shape and structure. Once you have finished trimming, ensure any sharp edges have been removed. Trimming the trays will optimize tray comfort and allow for full range of motion during the patient's study. Once your tray adjustments are complete, it is important to confirm that the tray fits well and is comfortable before taking impressions. Place each tray back into the patient's mouth. Ask the patient to confirm that the tray fits comfortably. You are now ready to take impressions.